What's going on? Welcome to another trade deadline oriented video. I'm going to be dropping five trade destinations for five different Blazers players over the next five days, starting off with this one, which is for Larry Nance Jr. But before we get into the video, uh, check out the upload I made yesterday. I talked about one pl one player I really want the Portland Trail Blazers to go after. I just gotta give that video a shout out because if I'm uploading every day, which is the plan, you know, some videos are gonna end up getting buried beneath a bunch of uploads so uh definitely go check that out i'm also putting all my trade deadline oriented videos into their own playlist i'll put that at the top of the description so you can go through uh, whenever you want and watch some trade deadline oriented content with that being said, let's jump into the video. Now, Larry Nance Jr. is the least likely player, in my opinion, to get traded in this series. However, I don't think there's a 0% chance that he gets traded. I think there's uh, maybe a 20 to 30% chance that he ends up somewhere other than Portland after the trade deadline. Uh, so all these destinations are in case the Blazers trade them. Now, of course, there could be destinations that aren't on this list for him. These are just the five most likely destinations in my opinion and i'm going to go into why as well as some of the trade assets that the blazers could get back from said teams the first team we have for Larry Nance Jr. would be the Charlotte Hornets, and I think Larry Nance Jr. makes a lot of sense here. Charlotte doesn't have a lot of depth in the front court in terms of big men, and uh, some people think they're a suitor for Yusuf Nurkic because of that, and they might be, but they play at a really fast tempo. Larry Nance Jr., I think, would be the ideal five-man for their up-tempo offense as he can grab the ball and push it up the floor. He likes playing in a fast tempo offense he's an athlete he can pass a little bit he's just the ideal guy there in Charlotte and then of course defensively we all know he's a really good defensive player so uh, if they are looking for a center there in Charlotte Larry Nance Jr. would make a lot of sense now what could they give up for Larry Nance Jr. I think in a deal uh, for Larry Nance Jr. they wouldn't give up PJ Washington I know he's been a guy that a lot of Blazer fans have liked I think it would be Ish Smith which is basically a four point five million dollar expiring contract and then to match salary they would have to include another minimum contract Jalen McDaniels is intriguing he started off the season shooting the ball well from three don't get him confused with his brother Jaden who plays in Minnesota uh, Jalen McDaniels would be an interesting filler piece or maybe it's just a minimum guy that's not really worth much and maybe Charlotte's willing to throw in a first round pick for Larry Nance Jr. and we're able to recoup the value we give up for him if we're really trying to sell and really trying to stop Piled draft picks then maybe that's the sort of deal we go after if we got a Jalen McDaniels though that would be a guy next year making about two million dollars a year and he'd be a rotation player at one of the forward spots he's more of a power forward in my opinion so uh you know cheap rotation players allows you to save money to go after other things and might allow us to have some sort of cap space this offseason and uh, Larry Nance Jr. for McDaniels is two million dollars contract next year and ish smith's expiring would help us kind of chase some cap space the next team i have for larry nance jr is the boston celtics now boston's in a really weird position as we head into the nba trade deadline i have no idea what they're going to do and i don't really know exactly what they're looking for but looking at their roster they could use some power forward depth they have depth at the center spot they got robert williams they got al horford they got ennis uh for freedom uh, and his canter but i think they could use another power forward they got grant williams there they've played jason tatum as a small ball for a lot of times i just feel like larry nance jr is the defensive player that they need that would fit in offensively as well they have a number of ways to go out and get him they could trade marcus smart for him i don't see them doing that but maybe that'd be of interest to portland they also have a traded player exception that's big enough to absorb uh, Larry Nance Jr.'s contract outright. So if Portland wants a $10.6 million traded player exception, uh, they could trade Larry Nance Jr. to Boston and not take anything back. That's how traded player exceptions are created. And maybe you're able to get a draft pick as well. Or maybe you take a flyer on a young guy like an Aaron Neesmith. There's a number of different ways in which Boston could go out and acquire Larry Nance Jr. That would make sense for both teams, which is the main reason why Boston is on this list for Nance. Third team that I have as a potential 
eventual Larry Nance Jr. destination would be the Toronto Raptors. And the Raptors are interesting as well as they head into the deadline. They have three forwards right now with OG Ananobi, Scotty Barnes, and Pascal Siakam. Siakam's been playing great. Ananobi's been struggling lately after starting the season hot. And then Scotty Barnes is currently their prized rookie. What the Raptors don't have is good, legitimate centers. They've been playing Precious Achua at the center spot, and he's really struggled in that role. They've played Chris Bruchet in that role, but he's extremely skinny and kind of a finesse player. Uh, Ken Birch has gotten minutes there. Uh, Toronto doesn't really have a center going forward, and I know Larry Nance Jr. is kind of a small ball center, but I think he would immediately be um, the best center out of the three guys that they've been playing at that spot. They've been playing Pascal Siakam at some center too. He's more of a four to me, so they could use some front court depth, some big man depth, and they like versatile defenders that can pass a little bit as well as shoot the ball you know Scotty Barnes is in that mold Pascal Siakam's in that mold Larry Nance Jr. I think would be in that mold obviously not to the level of a Scotty Barnes or a Siakam but he could kind of fit in with what it seems like Toronto likes to have on their roster Toronto is currently at 500 in ninth place in the east so they could make a playoff push and try and improve their front court depth for that reason supposedly they're buyers now at the trade deadline where a lot of people expected them to be sellers but the recent run they've went on where they've been able to win some games has them apparently in the buyer's market. So in terms of formulating a trade for Larry Nance Jr., the Raptors don't have a trade of player exception big enough to take him. They'd have to send out most likely one of Chris Boucher or Kem Birch. Chris Boucher is a $7 million expiring. Kem Birch has three years on his contract at about $6.5 million a year. I think they would prefer to send out Kem Birch. He's been injured a bit this year uh, in that deal. Kem Birch and a Malachi Flynn or a Watanabe or just any other minimum contract they have matches Larry Nance Jr. Uh, that's not going to be enough value for Portland, though. They're going to have to get a pick back. Toronto has all their future your first I don't think they trade their 2022 first for Larry Nance Jr. because they're right around the lottery. If they do, it would almost have to be lottery protected. They do have a 2023 second and a 2025 second that maybe Portland is interested in. Maybe Portland wants back Delano Banton, who's an intriguing second round draft pick from this previous draft. So making the pieces work here is a little bit difficult, but I think you have to put Toronto as one of the top five Larry Nance Jr. destinations simply because they seem to really value a player that plays in the mold of a Larry Nance Jr. Fourth destination I have for Larry Nance Jr. would have him returning to the Los Angeles Lakers. He started his career there after being the 27th pick a few years ago, and then he ended up getting traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers when LeBron was there. He played years in Cleveland and then obviously got traded to the Portland Trail Blazers. Larry Nance Jr. back to the Los Angeles Lakers would basically be the Lakers' last, like, all-in move. They don't really have assets for what you would normally consider an all-in move. They only have one future first-round pick they can trade. Their only middle tier salary is Talon Horton Tucker making about nine and a half million dollars a year and then they got Kendrick Nunn making five million dollars a year so really only two trade packages work for the Los Angeles Lakers to match salary for Larry Nance Jr. which would be Talon Horton Tucker straight up uh, and honestly as a Portland fan I don't want to trade Larry Nance Jr. for Talon Horton Tucker I think Horton Tucker is extremely overrated as a young prospect he's really struggled this year uh, if you could flip Horton Tucker to a third team and maybe get back a first round pick from that team, then, you know, you're starting to recoup value there for Larry Nance Jr. And maybe you're able to get something a little extra on top of that. Uh, I don't think the Lakers would trade both Horton Tucker and their one future first, which I think is in 2027, 2028, somewhere around that time frame. I don't think they trade both those assets. I think that's a little bit too much for them. Um, so it'd be THT for Larry Nance Jr., maybe in a 3 team trade where we get something else back or it would have to be Kendrick Nunn and two expiring contracts for Larry Nance Jr. In that scenario, you'd almost have to get back that future first from LA. Uh, it's hard for them to trade seconds and I don't want seconds for Larry Nance Jr. And they don't really have 
have any minimum guys that intrigue me. Kendrick Nunn doesn't intrigue me. Uh, so essentially, it's 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 a situation where it'd probably be THT. And I think the Lakers might honestly do that. They could use a little bit more versatility in the front court. They got Dwight Howard and DeAndre Jordan as bigs. LeBron has played some center. AD's played uh, more center than he usually does. So they could use a guy like a Larry Nance Jr. who has some experience playing with LeBron, playing in some big moments. So maybe Nance is a role player that the Lakers are interested in pursuing. The fifth and final destination for Larry Nance Jr. is the Dallas Mavericks. And the main reason why I think Dallas is a destination is because they do have a traded player exception big enough to absorb Larry Nance Jr.'s contract without sending anything else and they're far enough below the tax that doing so wouldn't put them into the luxury tax. Now in terms of assets I don't really like the assets that the Dallas Mavericks have. They can't trade a first round pick until 2027. So it's kind of the same boat as the Los Angeles Lakers. They don't really have any intriguing young players outside of Jalen Brunson, who doesn't make sense for the Blazers long term. Outside of that, nothing really intrigues me. Dorian Finney-Smith would be nice, but I don't see them trading him for Larry Nance Jr. They also kind of have a little bit of a log jam at the four and five spots. Finney-Smith plays some four. They got Dwight Powell. Maxi Kleba, uh, Chris Stapps Porzingis, of course. But Finney Smith can play some three, and they could use a Larry Nance Jr. He would definitely get minutes for them and play a good role for them. Dallas has been winning games. They're going to be looking to make a playoff push and finally get out of the first round uh, with Luka Doncic. I think the trade that would make the most sense is maybe Dallas gives up a couple of seconds and absorbs Larry Nance Jr. into their traded player exception as part of a three or maybe even four team deal with Porzingis. Portland uh, doing something else. On Portland's end, you can count Larry Nance Jr. as $10 million of salary going out. And if you're making a deal with another team, that's $10 million to match what you're bringing back from said other team. But that team doesn't have to receive that $10 million, if that makes sense. So it makes some of the math and some other potential deals a little bit easier. It also could create a traded player exception for Portland. They could get creative and figure out a way to uh, use Larry Nance Jr. going to Dallas to create an even 20 or $30 million traded player exception if it's a CJ McCollum trade going somewhere else. So uh, there's creative ways to kind of manufacture assets and Larry Nance Jr. going into Dallas's traded player exception could be part of a creative deal that Joe Cronin might pull off. We don't know what type of deals Cronin will pull off. Uh, we haven't seen him uh, pull off a deal yet, so it remains to be seen. But I think Dallas is kind of the sneakiest team on this list as a potential Larry Nance Jr. destination for the reasons I stated. Anyway, that wraps up this five destinations for Larry Nance Jr. video. This was honestly the hardest list of teams to put together for a potential Blazers trade asset. It was much easier for guys like Yusuf Nurkic, Norman Powell, CJ McCollum, and Robert Covington. That's going to be uh, the next four guys, not in that order. That's going to be the next four guys though in this series uh, before we wrap things up. So I'm going to be dropping one of these videos every day. That's the goal right now. Hopefully you enjoy them and hopefully it gives you some insight as we head into the trade deadline. Line. With that being said, I'm out of here. Thank you for watching. As always, peace out. Go Blazers.